It's Tozer. <laughs> Jesus taught the moral relation between words and deeds. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. Acts 1 and 2. Acts 1, 1 and 2. I'm afraid we modern Christians are long on talk and short on conduct. We use the language of power, but our deeds are the deeds of weakness. Our Lord and his apostles were long on deeds. The Gospels depict a man walking in power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The moral relationship between words and deeds appears quite plainly in the life and teachings of Jesus. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus places doing before teaching. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.19 Since in one of its aspects religion contemplates the invisible, it is easy to understand how it can be erroneously made to contemplate the unreal. The praying man talks of that which he does not see, and the fallen human mind tends to assume that what cannot be seen is not of any great importance, and probably not even real, if the truth were known. So religion is disengaged from practical life and retired to the airy region of fancy where dwell the sweet and substantial nothings which everyone knows do not exist, but which they nevertheless lack the courage to repudiate publicly, although now they do so in ever-increasing numbers. I could wish that this were true only of pagan religions, but candor dictates that I admit it to be true, alas, so much that passes for evangelical Christianity. There is more talk than walk. There is less doing and more saying. And the sad part is, is that while there may be those who talk of moral uprightness, the truth is they are just as decrepit and fallen in nature as everyone else is. If it were that God had saved the soul from sinning, then why is it that the greater numbers of divorce as well as the greater numbers of moral depravity are not in the cults and the ungodly, but rather in those who have a form of godliness but lack the power thereof? What is the problem in the church today? What's wrong with us? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with I? For each and every one of us have to examine our own hearts to determine where our walk is and where our talk is. Because it's easy to talk a great story, and I would rather not be judged according to my righteousness because I, for one, know how sinful I am and how fallen and depraved I can be Give me five minutes with any other man, and I'll tell you the same true story of them. Likewise, for they are sinners too, saved by grace. But I think that the reality of what we're learning in Tozer isn't just simply one of where is evangelical Christianity in its righteousness, because everyone acts perfect and holy, but rather are we willing to admit we're sinners, and we need mercy and grace. Rather, isn't it something that God wants us to extend to others? The love of God, the mercy, the forgiveness. Were you forgiven? Then will you forgive others? Has mercy been extended to you? Then will you allow grace in others? Do you save those to come to Jesus and then make them not follow through because they don't follow the words and the walk the same as you? Is it all about making another person look like you and me? Or are we the Pharisees making them twice as fit for hell as ourselves? Let's examine ourselves and see whether our walk is our talk or whether our talk is our walk. Because, you see, it's easy to click like and dislike on Facebook or the Internet. But it's another whole story to have to stick our neck out and let somebody see we haven't shaved today or possibly we're not as holy as we think we are. 
for me, I try to be real with everyone that watches, and I try to share the reality of, hey, I'm no saint. <laughs> it doesn't take five minutes to figure that one out. But rather, what God has done in my life has caused me to know a joy in the relationship that He forgives me and brings me to a peaceful contemplation of Him so that Him and I, as well as with my Father in Heaven, can communicate. Because if it was all about perfection, then none of us would be saved. But because it's all about what Jesus has done for us, we can all be saved. And I pray that we could all learn to love one another because Jesus said, by this shall they know that you are my disciples indeed, in that you have love for one another.